These are the Vile, one of the many factions from Idols of Torment, which is my original game system available on Kickstarter now. We designed all these models specifically for our game but with the goal of having them be usable for tabletop RPGs as well. These gross, fungus-covered, parasitic insect things would make for exciting foes in a game of D&D. But where would a showdown against them take place? A creepy forest, just in time for Halloween. This build starts with big, chonky foam. This can be impossible to find locally, so if you need some, I've got a link in the video description to the foam supply store where you can buy it. I freehand cut some circular pillars, intentionally being pretty wavy with my cuts. I wanted to have my basic starter pieces already have some of that tree bark shape to them. There's a couple ways I could go about carving in the more detailed bark pattern. A hot point engraver or a soldering iron tool would do this pretty quickly, but it wouldn't give me the sharp refined details that I wanted. So I opted for carving everything with an X-Acto knife. There's a couple tricks to doing this. The first is ensuring that you've got a fresh sharp blade so that the foam doesn't tear and you want to replace your blade as soon as it starts to dull. I made some waving cuts while holding the blade at a slight angle. Then I made secondary cuts following that same line a few millimeters away from it with the blade angled in the other direction. This creates a V-shaped cut in the foam. Then you can remove that strip of foam, leaving a nice sharp groove. This process is repeated over and over again until the entire perimeter of the foam is covered. I made sure to make this pattern not look repetitive. This is probably the most challenging thing when carving natural items, making them look natural. But if you take your time, get comfy, and make each cut a bit different, it'll turn out great. Making some knot holes where old dead branches would have fallen off really helps to sell the old tree stump appearance. Because I wanted these to look like old rotten stumps, I decided to hollow them out. If you wanted to make these as big tree stumps where you're implying that they're actually a real tree continuing upwards into the sky, you wouldn't do this. But for that creepy old haunted forest look, this is essential. I also cut the tops in a kind of wavy jagged line while I had them at the hot wire cutter. Since I used the hot wire to hollow them out the fast way without feeding the wire through a hole in the middle, this meant my pieces were split. No worries though, this was quickly resolved with some hot glue. To make these look more like hollowed out trees and not just tubes of foam, I used my knife to do some relief cuts around the inside of the holes. This created a layered look like there was actually a, you know, a harder wood material on the inside with a separate layer of bark on top. Of course, old rotten stumps wouldn't be all standing perfectly straight upright at 90 degrees. So I cut the bottoms of the smaller ones at an angle so they'd look like they were sinking into the ground. The big one needed some roots, and I found something cool to do this on my last trip to Dollarama. These decorative wood stick things. Trent, how's this for wand club? The tricky part would be cutting small sections of these sticks to use. I didn't want to make a big dusty mess in the studio with any power tools, so I opted for the slower and more awkward method of cutting by hand with a coping saw. This wood was fairly easy to cut through, so it wasn't that difficult. To make these pieces work so that they intersected with both the stump and the table nicely, I needed to do my best to make the two cuts at 90 degree angles to each other. I could then hot glue them in place. Any spots where it didn't meet the foam perfectly, I could resolve by cutting out a little hole in the foam where I could embed the wood, prioritizing the angle that meets the table. If these were going on bases, I could be less precise and I could have hidden and secured them to the ground with some ground cover, but I wanted these to be freestanding to work on any play surface. I thought the roots looked a little small, a little under scale and the gaps underneath didn't quite look right. So I decided to fill them with something. The best thing I could find on hand was some air dry clay. Play. This stuff is pretty light, which is good for this sort of delicate foam piece. I folded in some PVA glue to help it stick better. I'm not sure how much of a difference this actually makes, but it probably doesn't hurt. I let the clay dry overnight. Then the next day, I coated everything in a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint. The roots and the edges of the foam were still looking a bit smooth and boring, so I applied some texture paste. This would have the added advantage of making the foam even more durable. And I wanted to add some fungus, some little mushrooms growing on the bark. My idea was to use small shells for this. I went to Dollarama to grab some, but they didn't have any. I swear they did at one point. I looked for an alternative and landed on these pine cones. By cutting apart the individual, uh, 
I, like, I don't, I don't know what they're called actually, the little pine cone scale thingies. These had a nice shape for mushrooms growing on the surface and I could cut them a bit pointy and then glue them into slits on the foam so they were embedded and wouldn't easily break off. I gotta say, I'm pretty damn happy about how this looked. Before we break out some craft paint and make these stumps look rad, I gotta take a second to tell you about my friends at Crippled God Foundry. These amazing guys sculpted all the miniatures for my game, and they have a monthly Patreon where you can get their wonderful fantasy models, perfect for D&D. In October, their subscribers are gonna receive a collection of over 100 miniatures and scenery pieces for 3D printing. October is their six year anniversary, and they're celebrating with a crazy triple release. There's the quest for the Darkstone set, full of weird pseudo sci-fi fantasy creatures and characters and terrain. This is perfect for those of you jumping into the reboot of Spelljammer for 5th edition D&D. In addition, you'll get the Monstrober Phantom Zone set. That's not all. The subs in October also get another third free set, one of their older ones, which was chosen by their subs in a vote. As if that's not enough, new subscribers also get the huge throwback collection and a welcome pack. This is by far the best deal I've ever seen for a single month from a 3D model provider. It would be absurd for you not to join this month. Links in the description. Seriously, go check this out before the month is over. Now, painting. I covered all that texture paste with a thin coat of very dark gray to give me a starting point to paint from. Wood bark is a perfect candidate for dry brushing. My first go was with a light gray because I wanted to avoid the classic mistake of painting tree bark an unnatural dark brown color. This ended up looking just like a black and white highlight. So I switched to a more light tan color, which uh, still didn't look exactly how I wanted. Eventually I broke out some light brown and olive green and mixed them together on my brush. This gave me a nice swampy color that was a lot more in line with old tree bark. With the addition of that subtle color, I could come back in with my light tan dry brushing to highlight the edges without making it look like stone. I painted my little fungus friends with white, followed by a coat of a kind of sepia brown contrast paint. Oil washes would have worked really well for this project, but since I was only using a small amount, the convenience of contrast paint was well worth wasting contrast paint on some terrain. I think the most important decision I made on this project was to use this grungy, greeny, gray contrast paint to go in and recess shade every groove. Normally, I just slather the piece in an oil wash and call it a day, but for some reason, I was inclined to go this more tedious direction instead. And I'm glad that I did. It made a huge difference and really was the magic thing that made these look decent. And since I was on the contrast paint mindset, I finished them off with a little bit of dark green to simulate some mossy growth. These were relatively simple to make and actually pretty fun. The carving didn't feel annoying or boring to do. It was satisfying. I'm quite proud of these, both in terms of the actual build, you know, turning chunks of foam into a believable organic object, but also in the painting. The painting isn't complicated, but I think it looks really good. Yeah, I'm, ju I'm just feeling proud of this one. If you're interested in these minis or my game Idols of Torment, a reminder that it's a available on Kickstarter right now. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like and drop me a comment below. If you want to help me continue making these videos, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. That's it. That's all folks. Cheers. See you next time.